everybody, what's up guys? Matt here coming to you from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson. So it is that time of year again, the new Harley-Davidson model launch. Harley-Davidson now launches their new model year in January. Historically, it's always been in August and they have a big dealer meeting and show all the dealers the bikes in person. But when COVID hit, they changed all that. Now they do a virtual event. That event is gonna be on January 18th. That's when they're gonna be showing all their brand new stuff. So the stuff I'm gonna be showing you in this video is what they call their carryover models. It's bikes that were available last year and they're back for a returning year. They just underwent minor changes, things like colors and some other like sometimes minor details and things like that on the bikes. But this does represent more than half of the bikes that will be available in the 23 model year. And so, you know, every time I do one of these videos, I always get these people that say like, oh, wow, nothing new this year. Good job, Harley. Just colors uh, and, and more and higher price tags. And, and I'm sure I'm still going to get those comments. But just to be very clear, guys, this is not the new stuff. This is the stuff that is a 23 model, which I guess technically it's new, but it's the carryover stuff. So it's not the new products that are new for 2023. This is an anniversary year. Harley Davidson is celebrating 120 years of American motorcycling goodness. And they will probably do that in their typical way of celebrating it with anniversary motorcycles. So none of that is gonna be in this video. This is just what we know so far, but again, it's more than half of the bikes that will be out this year. And so I'm gonna be talking to you guys about all the information that I know thus far. We haven't received any these bikes in person which I typically don't like to do screen grab videos like this but I guess you guys let me know you know if you just say hey Matt you're better than that you know don't don't put out this you know website crap anymore I won't but I just wanted to, to get it out because this is pretty big information that's available now and again this is all real information there's just been a ton of rumors and speculation out on the internet every model year people want to speculate and get views and attention on social media and then people want to speculate about the speculation and just you know perpetuates a bunch of bad misinformation and so the information here is all accurate true on Harley Davidson's website and so this is stuff that is factual and not just speculation or rumors that have been going around as you would expect from my channel you know it's pride myself on putting out real credible information, not the fake crap. So anyways, let's jump right into this. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the omissions uh, that we don't see on the website right away. And so that either tells us that the bike's been discontinued or it's going to have some type of change on January 18th that we don't know about yet. So first off, jumping into the sport category, which was created when the Sportster S was first launched. And then the Nightster came out last year. Those are the two bikes in the new Rev Max Sportster line. You don't have the Nightster anymore. So the Nightster was either discontinued or they're doing something to it this year to make it newer and grander and great. Uh, we don't know yet, but right now we do see the Sportster S. And I will say too, the air-cooled Evo Sportsters, the Iron 883 and the 48 that were available last year are gone. And Harley Davidson made that pretty public uh, a long time ago that those bikes would be going away. So we no longer have the air-cooled Evo Sportster. Uh, rest in peace, great bike. A lot of people bought them. Harley sold, I want to say just under 2 million of them over the years. And so, yeah, awesome bike there's still probably some on the floors at, at dealerships i know we still have some left over so if you're looking to get into that platform arguably uh, the most customizable motorcycle ever created on planet earth just because it's been around for so long and so many people have made parts for it um, you can still get into it so jumping into the sportster s the sportster s uh, went relatively unchanged Great photography this year though, Harley Davidson. I think Kirpius and, and Ben Christensen did a lot of the photography, so good job guys. So this first color, you got the billiard blue, bright billiard blue I should say. Cool color, this is one of the new colors for the 23 model year, and you also have gray haze. This is a new color for the 23 model year as well. Price is pretty much the same. You're at $16,399, no real changes there. Maybe it went up a, a 100 bucks or 200 bucks. I can't remember exactly what it was in 22. Surcharge is the same. I think freight went up a little bit. Freight's now 700 bucks. I think that used to be five something, but everything else on the Sportster S is pretty much the same. If you haven't test ridden one of these bikes yet, guys, I would test ride one. They're 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 fast, they're fun, man. This is a, a fun bike. That Rev Max motor is, is a lot of fun if you've never ridden one. I would definitely give it a, a try. But like I said, no Nightster on the website thus far, so stay tuned. That's one thing to kind of look for in the January 18th model year launch, along with the anniversary models. You know, that's, I'm sure they're gonna be talking about anniversary models on the January 18th event. The Nightster, we'll see if that went the way of the Buffalo or if they're gonna be changing it. It is a brand new model as of last year, so I'd be surprised if they got rid of it. So, cruisers here. 
So you've got the Softail lineup and the Softail lineup looks pretty much the same as it did in the 22 model year. We don't have the Sport Glide, although I will say, and I get comments every year, people in like Europe or in Australia, they still have the Sport Glide over there. But in North America, we don't have the Sport Glide anymore. And that was discontinued last year in the 22 model year when the Lowrider ST came out. I, I think they figured that a fairing model bike with, with saddlebags on there, you just keep that bike and get rid of the Sport Glide. So Softail standard, you've got pretty much the same bike. It has the 107 Milwaukee 8. A lot of people like to speculate as to whether or not they're going to do like an engine bump. A lot of people were, you know, starting their rumor mill about getting rid of the 107 completely, but we still have the 107 Milwaukee 8. It is available on the Softail standard. They changed the graphic this year on this bike, but other than that, it's gone relatively unchanged. We'll jump into the pricing real quick. So surcharge is the same as it was last year at 750. And by the way, guys, surcharge was first introduced during the COVID years. And it's when like all all the, the cost of raw materials spiked really bad. Harley-Davidson wanted to uh, implement uh, what they had hoped to be a temporary fee to offset the increased cost of raw materials. And so that's kind of a sliding fee right now. It didn't move up this year, thank goodness, but it is still with us to, again, offset the cost of raw materials. I know when I give people pricing and things like that, that question always comes up, well, what's the surcharge? You know, they think that it's like a, a dealer fee slid in or something like that, but it's not, it's from the factory. You can see it right there on the website. And, you know, hopefully it goes away one day when, you know, things normalize, you know, after the supply chain issues that we're experiencing right now. Uh, freight did go up. I believe freight used to be like $600 or so on soft tails. And so that's now $700. Uh, ABS option went up as well. That used to be somewhere in the low 8 800 price range for ABS, but it is now $950 for ABS. So ABS is an option on the soft tail standard. A lot of people speculated that this bike would be going away, but it is still here alive and well at $14,399. One thing I did notice is they further differentiated the price point of the soft tail standard in the street Bob. The street Bob is now $16,599. So I want to say it went up probably like 900 bucks, a thousand bucks or something like that. This is a badass picture, by the way. Great photography. So yeah, the price did go up a bit on the street Bob. I want to say somewhere between 700 and a thousand dollars increase on the street Bob this year. You do have a new color option. You've got the industrial yellow. This is a brand new color this year industrial yellow you still got kind of the same graphic that they've had for a couple years now so this is the third year in a row they've had this graphic and you have the 114 on the street bob uh, when the street bob went through a, a change a couple years ago where it got the 114 it, it got bumped up and they put the passenger pillion on there with the passenger pegs as well you've got red line red which is a color last year and you've got vivid black as well i want to say they had a gray in the 22 model year which they don't have anymore and i will say too kind of a piece of information that i don't see very many people talking about is cruise control is now standard on the fat bob the lowrider s and the fat boy um, and it's interesting because on the website it doesn't say it so you would never know it but i happen to have uh, some information that lets me know that yes in fact these bikes do have cruise control so fat bob you've got gray haze you've got red line red and you've got vivid black the graphic on the tank the style is the same as it was last year and you can kind of see in the pictures though i will say you can see that you've got a cruise control button right there if you look close so cruise control is standard, but if you jump down to pricing, it usually would say cruise control standard, but it doesn't say that. So yeah, you, there's no way of really knowing on the website unless you have a keen eye that this bike has cruise control standard now. But you can see here, freight went up a little bit, like I already showed you on the soft tail standard. Surcharge is the same at 750. ABS is an option on this bike at 950 bucks. It didn't always used to be an, an option. A lot of people ask me about that. ABS became an option, I wanna say last model year with the supply chain issues. Once again, they started shipping bikes uh, without ABS and reducing it off of the MSRP and adding it in as a factory option if you wanted it. Last year it was 800 some odd dollars. So now it's $950. So let's jump on now to the Fat Boy. So great photo guys. So the Fat Boy comes in a new color, bright billiard blue. That's a sharp color. Other than colors, I don't think there's very many changes on the Fat Boy at all, with the exception of cruise control, like I mentioned. This is a really cool color, gray haze and silver fortune. Silver Fortune is a new color that I've yet to mention in this video, so that's a cool color. Great two-tone in my opinion. But as you, you can see here, you can kind of see that it's got cruise control right there if you look close. Price tag, 
pretty much the same as it was last year. You're right around that $20,000 mark on the Fat Boy, and you got a 114 as per usual on the Fat Boy. And you have chrome finishes as well. Chrome finishes were something that they changed last year. They used to have in, in the 18 model year when the Fat Boy was redesigned with the Milwaukee 8, they had what they call satin chrome which was like that dull chrome on it. I don't know if you guys remember that or not. I actually really liked that dull chrome, but since they changed it to like regular chrome, the Fat Boy actually started selling better. And so let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. Do you feel like the regular chrome on the Fat Boy is more appropriate than the satin chrome? Anyways, Lowrider S. So Lowrider S, uh, you're basically substituting out the gunship gray that was available in the 22 model year, and you're substituting that with the white sand pearl. So the white sand pearl, this is a new color for this bike this year. The white sand pearl was available on some of the bikes in the 22 model year, like the Road Glide and a couple other bikes. But the S models and like the ST models, they all just come in black and white sand pearl. So the Lowrider S had some cool changes last year. You know, they got rid of the, the gauges on the dash and they put it up there on the, the handlebars and they put the 117 in it. So you still got the 117 and the Lowrider S. Continues to be one of the most popular bikes in Harley Davidson's lineup. Pretty much last year, we were sold out all year round. We only sold them on deposits only. I think maybe Maybe one or two hit the floor all model year long and so if you want a lowrider s at least at our dealership call us leave a deposit because they do sell before they get to the dealership let's move on to the lowrider st the lowrider st quickly rose to stardom in the 22 model year i knew it would many of you saw our coast glide build that we basically wanted this type of bike for a long time now harley davidson built it last year and it, they made a great bike the fairing's awesome saddlebags the platform is awesome i mean I, this bike is just kind of the whole package it comes in a white sand pearl and the bike did go up a little bit i want to say last year it was 21,799, so like 400 bucks increased this year honestly i felt like it was underpriced last year and i know people are going to shoot me for saying that because everyone thinks that harley's already too expensive for what you get they're not i'll just be blunt with you pricing here again your standard pricing with soft tails and see this is what's what's interesting here um and i think harley's probably going to change this if they ever watch my video but cruise control option it says standard this line item should be on the fat boy the fat bob and the lowrider s as well it's not on there right now and the, that is standard on those bikes abs is standard on the lowrider st abs is not standard on the lowrider s by the way just so you know so back for another year you got the white sand pearl this year in lieu of the gunship gray another bike that's uh, at least at our dealership you got to have a deposit to get one of these these are all pre-sold the entire model year long and so yeah if you want one at our dealership put it get on the list uh the last but not least in the softail family you've got the heritage classic a great photo i know i keep saying that but photography this year is outstanding so the changes with this bike this year is you no longer have the mag wheels as an option. The last couple of years, you saw a mag wheel being an option. Now you only have the laced wheels. Personally, I feel like the Heritage needs to have laced wheels, and so I don't mind them getting rid of the mag wheels. This is a classic looking bike, and the Heritage historically has always had laced wheels, and the laced wheels belong on this bike. So you do have a couple options here. So you got the Atlas Silver. Um, I will say that you do still have the option of either black or chrome on the heritage and there is one color that's exclusive to each of those different engine trims atlas silver metallic you have to get that in the chrome if you want that color and you can get the prospector gold the prospect gold is a new color this year if i haven't mentioned that already so there's a new color there on the Heritage, that gold is exclusive to the black trim. This is a really cool sharp two-tone. This is probably my favorite two-tone this year. They call this Bright Billiard Blue and Billiard Gray. And this has the black finishes, of course. That's just a great looking bike right there. I love that two-tone. But the cruise control is standard on the Heritage as usual. ABS is standard. Cruise control is standard. And you can see if you get the black finish, you have a little bit of an upcharge if you want the black finish. So that pretty much does it for the Softail family. So really no omissions there and nothing new there. Uh, well, at least at this point, um, which if there was something new, they wouldn't have it on the website at this point. That's going to go up on January 18th once again. So we'll see uh, what happens. You know, in terms of, you know, historically what Harley Davidson has done with anniversary models, usually the Heritage always gets the anniversary treatment. And a lot of times the Fat Boy gets the anniversary treatment. So we'll see which bikes, if any, they decide to do anniversary models on in the Softail family. The Fat Boy and the Heritage are just kind of these long standing models in Harley Davidson's lineup that are just become 
immortalized in the Harley Davidson world. And so I think that's why they picked those to apply the anniversary treatment to. So we'll see what they do this model year. So jumping into the touring chassis family, pretty much uh, unchanged here with the exception of the Road King standard. So we do not see a Road King standard on the website here. And so it looks like that bike has been discontinued. Uh, again, we'll know that for sure January 18th. But let's start off here with the Road Glide standard. You do still have the 107 motor. That was always you know a big speculation point. People want to know if they're going to do away with the 107. No, it's back. And so this is the red line red, not a new color this year, but on this bike, I believe it's it's new. And then here's a new color for the Road Glide standard. You got the Atlas silver metallic. You've only got three color options, including black on the standard Street Glide and Road Glide this model year. And these only come in the chrome trim. You cannot get these in the black trim. And you've got 21999 for these bikes, so the price did not increase. However, some of the options did increase. So I'm gonna point that out right now, but this bike, you still got the Enforcer wheel, I think is what they call it, the Enforcer 2. So ABS, this is important, ABS is an option on the Road Glide and Street Glide standards at 950. It wasn't always like that. Again, once the supply chain issues hit in the COVID years, Harley Davidson made it uh, an option. And so they do ship some bikes without ABS in the standard. Freight is 850 now, so that did go up 100 bucks. Last year it was 750. Premium radios are now $1,000. I wanna say that was 930 last year, so that went up. And then RDRS is now $1,100. That was 1025 last year so again 75 bucks there so between all these things the, the bike went up you know four or five hundred bucks something like that from what it was in the 22 model year it's not a huge price increase but a couple little things in the fees that did increase the the price of the bike this model year so let's jump over to the street glide standard real quick same price at 21,999. i think it's smart that harley davidson just makes it uniform those two bikes are the same price for a long time they had like the street glide more expensive than they had the road glide more expensive and it was just like why uh, okay so you've got the same color options on um, both the standard street glide and road glide that's interesting usually they have one color that's different on each of those two models so same colors that's very interesting first time i think i've seen that so same options i already went over this with you guys on the road glide standard so i'm not going to repeat myself but back for another year with the 107 milwaukee 8 and the standards so let's jump over to the Road King Special. Again, there's no standard this year, at least as far as we can tell on the website. This is a great photo, by the way. Sorry, I'm kind of turning into like a, a photo connoisseur now that I'm, I'm trying to get into photography more. But this is the Industrial Yellow Road King Special, new color for this model year. Industrial Yellow, you get the price at $23,999. That's pretty much the same price as it was last year. And you do have two new colors industrial yellow like i mentioned and then you've also got that bright billiard blue this is a new color for the 23 model year and other than that i think the bike's gone relatively unchanged and the road king special we'll jump down to the pricing real quick just for kicks and giggles abs is standard on all the specials freight's up 100 bucks surcharge is the same like i mentioned i'll repeat myself surcharge was intended to be a temporary charge to offset the increased cost of raw materials and the increased cost of manufacturing these bikes without disrupting msrp so we'll see if that charge stays in place forever we'll see uh let's jump down now into the road glide special so the road glide special and the street glide special you've got the same color options great photo i think that's tall right there riding tall shout out dude okay so you got 2023 road glide special here this is the atlas silver metallic this is a new color for this model year you also got the prospect gold this is a new color the specials you can get in either the chrome or the black trim probably the same about a $900 increase in terms of pricing. So the Chrome is a little bit cheaper. Yes, it does cost Harley Davidson more to manufacture the, the black finish as opposed to the Chrome. There's always a big you know speculation as to why that is and people complaining that Chrome should cost more, but it doesn't. This is a new color. This is called Baja Orange. This is only available in the Chrome trim. So if you're into bright colors, that's a good option for you. Prospect Gold is exclusive to the black trim. So if you want one of those two colors, you're kind of stuck with just the the correlating trim option again this is a, a two-tone that i really like the billiard blue bright billiard blue and billiard gray with black finish you can also get it in the chrome finish but that's a cool two-tone i like that a lot here's another new two-tone for the 23 model year they call this industrial yellow and vivid black so that's exclusive to the black finish as well it's kind of a, a bright color as well Kind of a cool color. Jump down into pricing. Pretty much the same as I already mentioned in the last Turing models. RDRS went up 75 bucks. Freight went up 100 bucks. 
And we'll jump over to the Street Glide Special real quick. Pretty much all the options and color options are the same on the Street Glide Special as they are on the Road Glide Special. Yeah, you've got the same black as usual. You can get the black and the chrome or the, the black trim. Atlas Silver, you can get that in the black or the chrome trim. Atlas Silver, that's a cool color. I like the black trim personally. But then you've got the Prospector Gold. Some of these bikes, by the way, guys, are out at dealerships right now. Us being on the West Coast, we don't get our bikes as quick as some of the East Coast dealerships. We should be getting our, our bikes in the dealership probably next week. But I, I just thought I would get this information out to you guys as quickly as I could. But uh, yeah, some of these bikes are in dealerships now. And so you don't have to wait until January 18th. If you see something you like, you can get those bikes immediately. Well, for us, next week probably. You know, we have some bikes coming in next week or if you want to wait till the 18th until you see you know all the all the new models and see everything that's coming out including cvo's and anniversary bikes and things like that then you can wait till the 18th just that way you can get the full picture of what harley davidson is going to have of course every year harley davidson also does mid model year launches as well and so you know we don't know when those will come out or what they're going to be you know last year they had the nightster as i think a, i don't think they launched the nightster at the beginning of the model year i think that was a mid model year launch and then they had things like the enthusiast collection that was like that military inspired stuff and they had the apex stuff and so they do come out with stuff you know throughout the model year as well so here's a road glide limited uh, this is that two-tone again the bright billiard blue and billiard gray with black finish here you got a, an interesting two-tone with the prospector gold prospect gold and black two-tone i actually really like this this looks pretty good and this has the black finish only. You can't get it in the chrome. The limiteds, so both the Roguelite and the Ultra Limited, you can get the, the option of chrome or black. This is a really sharp two-tone right here, guys, that I like a lot. This is the Gray Haze and Silver Fortune two-tone. And you can only get this on the chrome engine trim. So not available with the black, but that's a sharp looking color right That I, I like that. Let's jump over to the Ultra Limited real quick. So I believe the, oh, looks like you got the Red Line Red and the chrome. A lot of the same colorways as the Road Glide Limited. Again, you can get this bike in either the chrome or the black finishes. The black trim you caught, you pay a little bit more for. That's a great two-tone in the black trim. I like that one a lot. If I were to get a bike this year in, in this model, I'd get that one. Gray Haze is cool, just a solid gray haze. That's a pretty rad color as well. So let's jump into the Street Glide and the Road Glide STs, guys. So back now for a second model year in a row, you got the STs, sense for Sport Touring. Those were kind of the, the big shebang in the 22 model year. They have the 117 motor in them from the factory. A lot of controversy there about people feeling like they shouldn't have the same engine size as a CVO, but they do. So we'll see what the CVOs have this year. We don't know what the displacement's gonna be on the CVOs yet. But what you got here is you got White Sand Pearl. This is That's gonna replace the gunship gray so like I mentioned already when I talked about the lowrider ST you got the black and the white sand pearl on these two bikes and that white sand pearl with the contrast with the bronze wheels that looks really sharp in terms of pricing it's still the same price $29,999 and then you have the RDRS the reflex defensive rider system available as an option on these bikes at $1,100 so 117 motor you got the short bags again these bagger ST models were kind of a performance bagger inspired by or King of the Baggers inspired shorter bags. You got some of the, the bronze highlights throughout the bike on the wheels and the engine trim that's kind of inspired by a lot of the custom builders that build performance baggers. Short bags, solo seats, different rear tail light assembly when you compare it to like the specials. You got the chopped engine guard on there, LED lighting, and you have a taller shock in the rear. And you have the fender as well that's a little bit smaller footprint, a little bit lighter fender on the front as well. And you got the ST with the 117 from the factory, heavy breather intake on there as well. A lot of times people ask me and kind of vacillate between, okay, should I get the ST or should I get a special Rogue Glide or Street Glide? And I usually tell people, hey, if you favor the 117 from the factory, then it's going to cost you a lot more money to put that 117 on a special than it would pretty much anything that comes on the special. So if you prioritize the 117, it's three cubic inches. It's about 5% more power. If you prioritize that, then get the, the ST. But if you want a bike that comes from the factory with the stretch bags, some people like that look, that have a, pass, a passenger seat and passenger pegs on the bike already, then get the the special and yeah you're getting the 114 which is still plenty powerful but and then you also like the rear look at the rear fascia of the special as well like you don't have the tail light it's just everything's all integrated into the turn signals and then that rear the lower fairing skirting down here so just a little bit different cosmetic things as well 
you know, the special has a little bit different air cleaner on there. It's got the ventilator air cleaner, the bigger fender, and it has all black wheels. It doesn't have the bronze highlights. So maybe you like the bronze highlights as well. And so that would be another thing to kind of push you in the direction of the ST. Okay, let's jump into Pan America. So Pan America, so you got the standard and the special still. It looks pretty much the same uh, in terms of equipment. Of course, you do have a new color, a couple new colors on here. You've got, and you can get the bike in the special at least. You can get it in the standard mag wheels, or you can get the lace wheels. Lace wheels, of course, are like six or 700 bucks more if you want that as a factory option. This is the new color, one of the new colors, industrial yellow and white sand two-tone. And you've also got gray haze. Gray haze is pretty cool. It looks like one of the initial colors when this bike was first launched. I wanna say it was industrial gray that this bike came out in. This looks similar to that. But you've got the three three colorways. Last year they had that blue and white one, which was kind of cool. So that's been discontinued at this point. Pricing looks pretty much the same. Surcharge on the Rev Max bikes is 500 bucks. That's gone unchanged. Freight looks like it went up a little bit less than 100 bucks. Adaptive ride height is the same as it was last year at $1,200. And lace wheels you pay a little bit more for as well. It's like 600 bucks or something like that. Uh, a couple things on the, the Pan America that I saw in like a, a Harley memo is you do have a new catalyst shield. So that would be this right here. So that's that's an additional shield that they put on the bike this year. I wonder if that was put on there to block heat. And that probably sounds obvious. If, why else would you put a, a shield on there but to block heat? So looks like some additional heat deflection on the bike this year. So that's new. Um, I don't know if that can be retrofitted to the 22 or the 21 model year bikes. I would assume it could be, uh, but I don't know. Uh, you've also got a new windshield support bracket. I'm not sure where that is, but I'm assuming probably this right here this bracket right here it probably makes the windshield a little bit sturdier one of the things that i, I pointed out when the pan america was first launched is that the windshield especially when you were adjusting it with the lever it felt a little bit flimsy now that i've owned the bike for a little over a year i, I love it i've had a lot of fun on it i've got a little over 5,000 miles on my pan america it's been dude it's been badass i love my pan america and so i, I quickly forgot about that but yeah it looks like they addressed that made maybe a little bit more robust support bracket and they say there's a, an exhaust fan heat shield as well so the exhaust fan i believe is over here so maybe there's a, a heat shield right here yeah it looks like maybe there's a new heat shield right here that wasn't there before so maybe that that blocks some of the heat from the exhaust fan because that's the exhaust fan right there so um, other than that the bikes remain the same which i wouldn't expect them to change this bike i mean it was pretty much revolutionary in the Harley world when it launched. Bikes plenty fast, don't need to change the displacement or anything like that. So Pan America is back. Of course, you've got the standard as well. Now standard, you know, it's not, some of the, the off-road focused accessories and things like that don't come on the standard. So, you know, you don't have the center stand. You don't have like the, the brush guards on the side of the bike. You can't get the laced wheel option. You don't have the hand guards on here. You don't have like the, the metal skid plate on the bottom. You don't have adaptive ride height some of the like electronics on the special are exclusive to that bike you don't get on the standard either but the standard if you want to save a few thousand bucks it's $17,699. That price has not changed since I think the launch of the bike. The Pan America Special, I think, went up like 400 bucks MSRP wise this year. And we saw that little bump in the, the freight as well. So the, the bike went up like 500 bucks or so on the Pan America. Uh, moving down to the trike, we have the Triglide Ultra. Uh, a notable omission here is the freewheeler. The freewheeler is the trike that does not have the fairing, does not have the King Tour Pack on there, has a little bit bigger wheel in the front, a little bit more of a sporty option if you want three wheelers wheels going down the road and so they either discontinued that or they're going to change it in the on the 18th we shall see great photo so um yeah these bikes looks like the price went relatively unchanged these bikes have been 36,000 bucks for a long time now in terms of colors you've got that cool two-tone got that prospector and then vivid black two-tone we saw that on the limiteds as well you've got chrome trim only on the trikes it's been that way for a while but you've also got the gray haze and silver fortune two-tone i really like that two-tone a lot I think it's sharp and you've got the Atlas Silver single tone as well. So you've got the, the tri-glide. So that's pretty much what we know so far, guys. So it'll be interesting to see you know, what comes out in terms of new models, what the anniversary bikes look like. And um, yeah, so this is this is gonna be probably 60, 70% or more of what our 23 model year is giving us. So we'll see what the other you know 30% or so is on the, the 18th of January. And if they launch anything, you know, mid-model year, you know, the last two years, they've also launched like an Icon bike. Last year, we saw the El Diablo, which 
is probably the most sought after Harley Davidson in the last two decades, honestly. Like, you combine the popularity of the Lowrider ST and you make something as cool as El Diablo, which you know pays homage to the old FXRT with the rad paint and everything with the, the speakers coming in there. Like, that's just been an extremely popular bike. And the year before that, we saw the Electric Ladder Revival. So we'll see if we have an icon this, this coming 23 model year and what that is. Like I said before, guys, I know a lot of people are going to comment in the comment section and say, oh, wow, nothing new, just new paint and, and higher price tags. I can't stress this enough. This is not the entire model year. We'll see the majority of the initial model year in January 18th at the virtual launch that Harley Davidson is going to put on. Definitely sign up for that. Join us live. I'll be live in chat during that launch. So yeah, check that out. This is on Harley Davidson's website. Anything I've covered here is all on Harley Davidson's website at this point. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching guys. Uh, if you don't like me doing these types of videos without capturing my own original content through the lens of my camera, let me know. I know some people like to hear my commentary on the bikes and what's what's new and what's missing and you know, what, what we know so far. And so if you want to see these types of videos in the future, let me know. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Later.